news links that I thought were interesting. Uh, this one uh, is very interesting. Right? Uh, machine learning, large language models take in a series of tokens, and then they have to put all the tokens in the memory and process them with the GPU, and that has limited the size. And um, the largest language models that exist uh, can take 70,000 tokens, which is about as long as a novel, but uh, 100,000 tokens, which works out 75,000 words. However, uh, what this guy has just figured out is how to use a ring calculation where you have only part of the data in memory at a time, and you calculate what's needed and pass it on to the next stage. Uh, the details aren't too uh, specific here, but anyway, they, he found it greatly increases the amount of context. Here's a chart showing it. Uh, let's see if this is going to get bigger, maybe. All right. And if I can get rid of this garbage. Um, and so here's the old models that can only do 10,000 or 70,000. This is a log scale. His new model can do more than 100 times as much. Uh, he hasn't talked about how fast it is anywhere here, but apparently it's okay. And so they say, some people are saying, this means they won't need as many GPUs, and I guess that's possible. I know Elon Musk bought uh, 10,000 GPUs, and they cost like $40,000 each um, to make a supercomputer, but we'll see. So anyway, it's, um, it certainly will mean you can have a lot more context, and that will change a lot of things, I think, because right now there's a big deal where you get a pre-trained model like ChatGPT, and then you retrain it on your company data to get answers relevant to your company data. Um, and this way you'd be able to retrain it on 100 times more of your company data. It might make it much better. Uh, so we'll see. New things will be possible. And he says is right now you might be able to quit using visual input and move to just putting in whole videos, where it reads the whole video and takes that as the input to extrapolate more stuff based on it. So, yeah, we'll see where it goes, but it certainly uh, should open up some new possibilities. So I was surprised to see this. 42% of Mac users are using AI apps daily. I certainly don't. And I was, what I was interested in is what are these AI apps they're using? And a lot of them I didn't know anything about. Um, so uh, uh, Typing Mind, Never heard of that. I mean, Bing and, and ChatGPT. Bing is AI, absolutely. Bing is open AI. It's the main, they integrated it. And um, I use Bing, and I use Claude, and I, and I might use ChatGPT, but I never heard of Elephos or Smart or MacGPT or hardly any of these. Grammarly, I guess, uh, I guess typing mine might be like Grammarly. Anyway, I, the thing I got out of this is it'd be worth checking these out and seeing what they are. Apparently, these are all considered very useful enough that they're commonly used by Mac users. Um, real hard for me to believe that 42% of Mac users are using these things. I wonder if that was a, anyway, that part sounds bogus, but anyway, I should find out what typing mind is. Sounds good. Anyway, um, so Google has made an AI stoplight program, which is actually, sounds like a pretty good idea. The point is, as we all know, if you drive around here, you spend a lot of time standing still in your car with your motor waiting to go. And they're trying to make more intelligent stoplights that will prevent that. Instead of just going down a cycle of 30 seconds this way, 30 seconds that way, it's going to adjust it to match the demand. Um, so I don't know. It seems to be like they've always had these. They've had like sensors that can just tell if there's a car waiting. And then, but anyway, they claim they can save uh, some portion of all the wasted uh, pollution. And I've seen a couple of numbers. I think they say here that 8%, oh, that's right, that's not it. I don't know how much pollution is caused by cars idling, probably not that much. I know 8% of global greenhouse warming comes from some concrete, and 4% comes from airplanes. And so there's a lot of push to improve both of those things. In fact, there was another uh, project, I didn't see it in my news here, but it should be there, where someone figured out how to make carbon negative concrete. Um, the concrete is created not with the previous system that involves heating something up, releasing all the CO2, but with a new system that takes waste products from mining and uses it and doesn't require any heat and it actually sucks up carbon. So uh, that's a, it's a famous football player made a startup to, uh, to sell those special kind of, come on, of cement blocks. So we'll see where that goes. Anyway, so Stack Overflow has laid off 100 people. Um, however, they doubled their staff last year. So it may not be all bad, but it probably is just all bad because, I mean, the, uh, the whole point of crowdsourcing your coding is kind of over. 
ChatGPT and Claude essentially do that for you. <laughs> so uh, I think Claude in particular pretty much replaces Stack Overflow. All right, to get rid of this garbage. So this is pretty amazing. So, um, you know, he, Ron DeSantis in Florida is very, very hostile to education and he's destroyed their progressive college there and driven away the teachers and the students to just turn it into basically a right-wing conspiracy theory kind of place, which is what Republicans like. And Ella in Louisiana is the same thing. In fact, Louisiana, um, very similar, this guy, uh, now a right-winger ran, ran one the governor office, and this guy personally targeted one of the famous professors at uh, Louisiana State University, and so he's just gonna resign rather than fight, because he says, uh, this guy totally wants me fired, and I do not trust my college administration to protect me from him at all, which I must say, I don't think I trust mine either. I mean, they can't really. College administrations are pretty much um, very, very helpless and scared and childish, and they just, uh, they'll fire people because one one parent complains. They'll they just don't want anyone to rock the boat, and so if they get real pressure from their funding from the government, they'll probably just do anything. I remember um, uh, decades ago, UC Berkeley actually because of Joe McCarthy uh, forced every professor to sign a loyalty oath, saying I'm not now and I've never been a member of the Communist Party. And for that, UC Berkeley lost all of its top professors for decades. They all left in protest and got jobs at other colleges. It was a huge scandal. In fact, it led to a, um, in order to try to revive UC Berkeley, a financier named Miller started something called the Miller Fellowship to bring in new professors, and that's how I ended up here. I was a Miller Fellow years later. He had was this permanent long-term fellowship that would bring people into UC Berkeley, and it wasn't until I'd had the thing for a couple of years I found out the history of it. That's why it existed. It existed to try to refresh the professor pool because they'd all left resigning over to loyalty oath. But this is extremely common, and uh, I don't even think I'm so upset about it as it would have been years ago. It's just the way it is. The, uh, but you understand at a college, the college doesn't protect you very much. Of course, companies don't protect you either. I mean, Elon Musk fires people on a whim. Google fires people. Somebody said they think the AI is sending it, so they just fired him. Their trust and safety team at Google tried to actually complain about the comments on YouTube, so they just fired them. And, you know, it's, you have more job security in the public sector than you do in the private sector. But in both cases, uh, anybody that rocks the boat is pretty much just discarded. Anyway, um, so this is something people are getting pretty excited about. Uh, the problem, there was an iOS update that was really important. The new iPhones were overheating and draining the battery. And they tried blaming apps, and it turned out it was a defect in iOS, and they put out an update to fix it. And this made people say, what if I buy a new iPhone? That thing was put in the box like two years ago or a year ago, so it's not updated. So when I get the phone, the first thing I'm going to have to do is like go through a long update process before I can use it, and that's a bad customer experience. So they have now going to have some system where you can put the phone in the sealed box on like an RF pad, and it will send some kind of signal which wakes up the phone. It'll push the update and update the phone in the box. And then the question is, could you use this to infect other people's phones? Because <laughs> the phone is turned off and not logged in, and yet there's a signal that will push updates onto it. So that sounds pretty joy <laughs> joyous for hacker. Anyway, we'll see what comes of this. It is kind of a bizarre idea, but it does remind me of another um, security issue that I've heard of for several years. Um, if you have Norton Ghost or golden images of your virtual machines, and then you, when you get hacked or when you go to a new location and want to roll out some new machines, you redeploy those images. The problem is the same thing. Those images are typically like a year old. So you're spinning up Windows machines with apps, and they're a year out of date. And so you have to put on all these updates. And if you aren't careful, they're going to get infected before you get those updates on there. And so there is a Microsoft process. They used to call it slipstreaming, and there's some new version of it, where you can update an image without it running. We can push a patch onto the image so that when that image is deployed, it'll be updated. And it's a similar issue. But the, the part where you wake up the hardware and don't need the password is the part that seems a little screwy. Although, iPhones in the box don't have a password and they haven't even been tied to a user yet. They haven't been tied to iCloud. There's like an out-of-the-box experience, like Windows, where it says, what's your name? Let's make an account for you. Let's log you in. So maybe it, you'd only allow this to happen in that state when it's a brand new machine that hasn't even learned to its core yet. That would be one way. Anyway, I imagine Apple will do something intelligent, but we'll find out. Um, tires on EVs also emit a lot. Yes, tires are a huge problem. 
of pollution, although I don't think it is global warming pollution. Um, tires, what I've heard is for years is the number one human health issue caused by cars is the tires. The tires emit tons of microplastic, and that gets in the air and people breathe it and stuff, and that's actually more harmful than the fumes these days. Um, and I imagine that applies to EVs just as much as other cars, perhaps even more, because EVs have a higher torque and they probably rip more little pieces off the tire. Yeah, so this is the one we were talking about before class. So you, I've seen this ad pop up. You pop, YouTube, now every time I restart my machine, my Brave browser, which is playing YouTube, pops up and says, ad blockers are not allowed on YouTube. Now I've seen that occasionally, and I checked the forums, and they didn't have anything smart. So I, just, I found that if you turn off the ad blocking and turn it back on again, it goes away. But apparently, now they're saying, uh, if you watch three videos and don't turn them off, they're gonna cut you off. So we'll see. Uh, the only thing they could do is cancel my favorites. So I can't, won't have a favorite YouTube stream anymore. We'll see what happens. We also have to go to something else like Spotify or something. I got Amazon Prime, and that gives me an Amazon Music app on my phone, which I use to watch podcasts. So I imagine I could probably figure out how to use the Amazon Music app on my computer to play music, and that would probably be a reasonable substitute. All I use YouTube for is to play music. Um, but the people that want to actually watch the videos and stuff, they want you to pay $11 a month, which reminds me an awful lot of Elon Musk on Twitter. He wants everybody to pay $8 a month. And uh, we'll see if people are willing to do that. I think they aren't. And the same thing I think happened, the alt, now that he's made Twitter focus primarily on the alt-right people, the problem is they're not happy with true social because they don't just want to have, see alt-right content, they want to be irritating liberals and hurting liberals. And if liberals all leave, it's no fun for them anymore. That's why there's no real market for the alt-right stuff, but we'll see. Anyway, all right, let me turn off the 